Hi, I'm Toby from AbletonDrama.com. In this video, I show you a whole run through of my Bob Pad 2 Ableton Live Session Control Max for Live device. So, this Max for Live device lets you set up more than only 4 or 16 if you use the whole preset for different actions here you can do with your bob head running midi to ableton live it gives you the opportunity to set up over 100 different states for your bob head with an ableton live which gives you the opportunity to trigger over 500 functions here that could be different midi note pitches triggering different clips or triggering different scenes so let's get the setup so obviously first you need to connect your bob head to your computer you can do this via a straight usb to usb connection or if you're using the keith mcmillan midi expander you might plug it in somewhere else via a second device via a midi five pin in port so um, if you have your pop head connected you go to ableton live to the preferences and make sure that the bob head track in is activated so for the stuff we are doing here only the bob head track in is important for the start so you can check now if your midi is coming in and you can see this via the midi indicator playing your bob head if the midi indicator midi indicator is flashing up you are sure that you are receiving midi here cool so um, you can just now place the device, the Bob Pad Session Control device on an empty MIDI track. You need to select the Bob Pad as an input and you want to set the monitor to in. You could as well have it set to auto and arm the track, but this is for recording purposes and not really for remote purposes. So I would advise you to use the monitor in here. Okay, you can open the um, Bob Pad Session Control view via this toggle button here. And now you will see the Bob Pad pop-up window here. You can place it wherever you want if you want to save its position. For example, here you can press S. So now the position is saved within this Ableton Live set. In some rare use cases, um, the window might not show up because maybe you used a, a second screen for setting this up, save the position, and then you're opening up your Ableton Live set on a computer um, without a second screen. So if in those rare cases this is happening, you can always click on Reset Window Position and it will um, go back to a initial position so you can save this here again. Okay, so the first thing you need to set up is the note input. So you need to train the device to listen to the notes, note MIDI note pitches your bob head is sending. So you have to activate the note input and you can see those quadrants here are changing and now we can um, switch the note input on for the fields we want to have being activated. We can press S now and this quadrant is now listening to the MIDI note pitch which is coming from your bob pad. So if I hit the bob pad now, you can see the MIDI pitch is detected automatically. So let's do this for all four pads here. There we go. Cool. So um, if you want to put in those notes via your computer keyboard, you can do this as well, or you can use your computer arrow up and down, or you could just put in values via your computer keyboard, typing it in, press enter. Okay, so now you can leave the note menu, and now you can see when you're hitting your bob head, the indicators here are flashing up. And there's something wrong with the MIDI mapping here. So I need to change this again. C1 is the right note. So this way you can check if your bob pad is sending the right MIDI notes to the right field. So now you're ready to set up certain functions. You can select notes so you can repitch the note you're sending in to a dedicated value. You could map a clip to being triggered by this pad or a scene. So let's start with assigning a scenes or assigning scenes here to those quadrants. So 
I gonna select scene for the first gradient here. And now I'm selecting a scene and I just press D for detect now and you can see the scene here, each as tune is being now synced to this pad. So I do this with the few more scene, detect, chorus, select the next one, select a scene and press detect. So now I already have those three scenes mapped to my bob pad here. One, two, so I can trigger those now three, one, and you can see they are one, changing accordingly to one, the last pad or two, the last MIDI input I triggered. Three, four, five, so obviously you want to trigger more than one scene with one pad. That's what the device is for. So if we're going to have a quick look, we could set up a few more things here, a few more scenes here, but we have to use the different presets. I call them states in this device. So for state one, we have now set up those three scenes here. So let's go to the next state or preset and let's map a few different scenes here. So let's select um, sorry, let's select the, the next tune, go to my first gradient here again. So now this one is being mapped. Let's select the next one and let's do one more. And I don't need to double click on the scene so it's folding up. Cool. Okay, so now I have three different scenes each. Uh, being mapped to the different states. So I can change the states and I will explain a little bit more about states later on. But now you can see if I'm in state and preset number one, gradient number one will trigger one. the scene EJS tune. Two. And if I now go to my second state, my second uh, preset here, gradient number one will trigger two. the next tune Three. or a different scene. So the same works for clips here as well. So let's get rid of all the assignment by pressing the clear button here. And let's do this for the first section here as well. So let's select clip for all those three gradients here. And um, those settings are being global. So you can see now if I'm going to my um, next state or preset here, um, it's still staying on clips. So you can automate this if you want a pad or a gradient to trigger uh, in one part of your set, you, you want it to trigger a scene or if you want to trigger, want it to trigger a clip or a note, this can be set up via automation um, via clips, which I will show you later. Okay, so let's stay for the clips for now. So we want to maybe just use a few clips here. So intro, chorus, verse, maybe those three clips. Let's set them up. So I select a clip, I press detect and you can see it's detected already. Let's do the same for the chorus and let's do the same for the verse. And here again as well, we have the opportunity to set up different states or presets. So let's take a few more different clips for the next preset for the next state here. So I select intro for this one, select into two chords for the next one and the chorus part here. I shouldn't double click on here. So, and now I have those three scenes being mapped to state number two. And if I'm switching back to state number one, those first three clips are being triggered. So let's quickly proof this. So you can see my three pads here, my three gradients are triggering those three clips here. If I change to my preset or state number two, they will trigger different clips. Okay, so the same works for 
um, MIDI note pitches. So if we select note pitches here, we could actually have different notes being sent. So this could become handy if you have different songs um, where you want to trigger different sounds, um, drum samples or other samples here. So you could set up different MIDI notes we sent in scene number one. And if you change to the next state, those different MIDI notes will be um, triggered. Okay, so let's set up a few things here for the state. So let's say we want this state here not only to have different um, setups, but to show a certain name here as well. So we can define the name of the first state here and let's call it first song. I just type it in here down below. It's very small because we don't actually need a big UI for that. If I press enter now, this name has been taken for the first state. If I switch to the second state, um, let's put in second song, very creative name, and I should spell it right. Press enter, and now you can see this name has been taken here. So this way I get some nice overview of which state, which preset I'm actually in, and which song or which clips or scenes or notes I'm controlling here. So selecting and changing between scenes can be done via hitting or clicking on those arrow up, arrow down here. I could obviously MIDI map those buttons here as well. And I could actually map this uh, rotary die control here as well. So I could use external MIDI control here. Um, I could set up a note, direct note input as well for the arrow up and the arrow down. I can detect something. So let's quickly just set up the fourth gradient here to go one up. So I have done this by toggling on the note mode and then I can put in a value here or auto detect it via another sync button here. I need to switch it on obviously. So if I now leave the note in menu, my fourth gradient will um, hit and move this um, state one up. So if I have a limited number of states or if I want to cycle through states, I could set the states down to a lower value than 128. So 128 would be the maximum number of states or presets I can store and I can save. But let's say I only want to have two different states here. So if I'm now clicking on next, you can see it's always only changing between, between one and two because I've set the maximum number of states and presets I can mm, select to two. So if I'm now hitting on my bob pad, which is mapped to this button here, you can see it's going up and cycling through the next one. Let's do number three just to make this really obvious. Let's do three states, I mean. So you can see one, two, three, and if I'm at the maximum number, it will jump back to the first one again. So in some use cases, if you map um, MIDI map this to um, external MIDI buttons uh, from your external MIDI hardware controller, you um, might need to set this to toggle this behavior. So um, if it's set to momentary, it will only listen to node on messages and switch off the button. I can set up um, automated changes of states here as well via dummy MIDI clips. So for example, if I create a clip here, if I go to the bob head, session control device and to the state dial, I can set a breakpoint here, just click on the red line here. And now this one means the first state is gonna be selected when this clip is playing. So let's watch this. It's currently on state number two. So if this clip is now being triggered, it's changing to the first song. Let's do this for the second one here as well. So I set a breakpoint in the state dial section here. So this way now, if I'm selecting this clip and this clip is being played 
as soon as this clip is being played, this automation here um, in the envelope is setting the state control, the preset control to number two. So this becomes very handy if someone else or some other musicians you're playing with or your playback main computer is sending um, changes of scenes here or if you're using scene follow actions here, which is available since Ableton Live 11. Um, so you could have those um, dummy clips here, those dummy MIDI clips, um, selecting the right um, preset, the right state of the bobhead session control device. So you don't need to change anything manually in here, just the right notes or the right clips or the right scenes you want to trigger will be um, selected automatically. If you want a pad to do different things, you can set this up via automations as well. By different things, I mean, um, let's say in one section you want it to trigger a scene and in the next session you want it to trigger a clip. So let's quickly do this. So um, let's switch those off to make this more obvious. So let's say in the first song, we want this pad to trigger the intro clip here and in the next song we want this same pad to trigger a scene so using a different function okay so let's do this so the first song this one is triggering the intro clip yeah so just let's quickly do this to make this real obvious so if i'm hitting it now this clip is being triggered okay so let's say in number two, so in state number two, in the second song, we want this one to trigger a scene. So let's say we want it to trigger the solo part here. So let's quickly set this up. We select solo part and uh, make sure scene is selected and then press detect. So now we have set up two different functions here and we need to make sure that this is changing the function here. So we need to go to the MIDI clips here and we need to set this up for every um, song here now. So we need to select the pad selector, um, which is selecting the pad function here. So pad one is the one, um, the last parameter I touched. So it's automatically the parameter which is being selected here. So I can set this to scene. No, sorry, I want to set this to clip because we are in, ah, we are in session two, we are in scene one. I want to set this to clip, obviously, because this one should trigger this clip here. So we want to trigger a clip, makes sense. So now in number two, we want this to be in the second song, in the second MIDI dummy clip here, we want this to trigger a scene. So we net, need to set this to scene so now you can see if i'm triggering this first clip you can see it's jumping to clip to the function clip if i'm triggering this second clip here it's going to trigger a scene so this way you have a lot of um, things you can do with just one pad even here so the limitation of the bob pad which is having the opportunity only to say four different MIDI notes per preset. So um, you have four presets you can select on your bob head. So this gives you 16 notes, 16 clips, 16 functions in total. But with the device here, you have up to 128 presets. So um, you have over 500 different functions you can actually trigger with this device here.